So uh, fantastic. Well, uh, next up, uh, we have a talk now while uh, the next speaker is getting connected. Uh, we have probably just a couple seconds. Um, oop, and there comes uh, Gearman. All right. How are you? Hey, there we go. How are you doing today? Can you hear me all right? Cool. All yes. right. So, the, the, yes, awesome. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, we have uh, Guillerme. Uh, Yannick is talking about automation API testing with Postman Collections. And I think we are all set for you to take it away. Stage is yours. OK. So I'm selecting the screen sharing. Yes. And it should be all right. Yes. OK. OK, so my name is Guillaume, and I'm an uh, architect at CEP Group. Uh, this talk is about our journey into designing test automation for new document management uh, services API, and how we took advantage of uh, Postman and OpenAPI specifications to do it. Uh, CEP is a subsidiary of a COP financial group, and we are in the insurance business, and we have been bought this year by, uh, by Bridgepoint. Uh, we're located in Nantes, in France. Uh, we have over 26 years of experience in uh, loan protection insurance and personal pensions. And we're developing our business model across Europe. And our main activities are commissioned uh, policy manager. We are processing subscription claims and after sales on behalf of our, our partners. And we offer personalized support for, for our partner organizations. Uh, Operational business rests on uh, document processing. Nearly uh, 100 million documents received so far, and more than uh, the same uh, documents sent. And we do it across uh, around 10 different channels. Uh, we have a strong culture of uh, in-house uh, development. And uh, from different aspects, we are still in constant transformation from legacy uh, to, uh, to Java Rails from skills teams to product teams, from on-premises to public or private cloud, from uh, one delivery per month uh, to continue the delivery, and from manual testing to uh, test automation. Uh, our in-house development management system is more than uh, 20 years old. It's very old, um, and it's been built uh, for years over, on top of, uh, of, uh, of the mainframe. And we are currently building a new uh, document management services API to be a cloud native on uh, AWS. And we are migrating it from, uh, from our legacy system using the Strangler pattern. A starting point of our journey is that uh, we, have a, we, have, we have a strong belief that uh, API testing should be uh, automated if we want to enable uh, continuous delivery and, uh, and a shorter time to market. The context uh, of our project is that uh, at CBP, testers aren't uh, computer scientists. They used to be uh, uh, contact, agent, uh, contact center agents or case managers, but uh, not, uh, not computer scientists. And I'm also uh, understaffed for, for technical specifications. So my, my problem is to, to make test automation friendly enough uh, for, um, for the, the tester we have, and uh, it was no budget. Uh, so my, my concern is, uh, uh, does Postman, uh, can Postman do the job? Uh, why Postman? Because uh, it has a good reputation. It's uh, GUI is, uh, is user friendly. Uh, I've used it before, so I, I, I know a bit uh, of Postman. And I know it I can, can be used for API, API testing. I know it can be automated from, uh, from CLI with Newman. I know basic is user is free and never block me in any way. And I don't have uh, much time to, for, for specifications, so no time for, for market research also. So yeah, Postman it's, uh, seems to be a, a, good, uh, a good lead. So Postman lets you define uh, pre-request scripts uh, that will be executed before the, the request itself. And it also lets you define test scripts that will be executed after it. And uh, it's in the letter that you can write your, your different sessions. Uh, there's two key features for testing in Postman. There's a session language, which uh, is human readable. And uh, it can also be used to perform a JSON validation. You know, on the right, you can see what uh, it looks like when you've implemented some tests and that they, they all pass. 
Uh, problem is that it's really not accessible for the, the non-technicians of the population uh, I have to deal with. And uh, I don't have at the, at the moment of the, the study uh, the scheme of our endpoints. So at this time, meanwhile, the testers are struggling because I, I, uh, I don't have time to, to do real good specifications. So I just, I just have ideas. Uh, it's not accurate. So uh, developers get, are guessing what I what I want, and testers don't know, uh, don't figure out uh, what uh, what uh, what should be tested. Uh, Swagger at this time it's uh, is generated from the code. It's code first. Uh, it's really reliable from the reality of the code, but uh, endpoints are not really consistent from one another, and uh, documentation is uh, limited as dev that don't like to to spend time on it. So it's pretty bad. Uh, so we decided to change the product. Uh, Swagger will now be produced from, uh, from uh, OpenAPI uh, specification that I will write. And, um, and so the, the API is more consistent. Uh, documentation is better because I take time to do it. And the dev wastes less time guessing what I want. Tester knows what to test. So it's, uh, it's good, it's pretty good. Uh, now I need to, to help the tester uh, automate uh, the test. So my first idea is to uh, inject, um, now that we have open API specification, I can, tr I can transform them into a JSON scheme and I can inject them into Postman using query paste. I can do some factorization to, uh, to, uh, to uh, leverage the, the query paste uh, thing. But however, it's still, uh, still too much manipulation between the conversion strips JSON schemes injection, postman item configuration. So it's not really, uh, not really good enough. So a feature I, I, uh, I run into is uh, interesting data. It's an interesting feature in postman that lets you uh, uh, run a loop of different test data for a given set of requests so that you don't have to duplicate uh, those requests in, uh, in postman. And interesting data can be described in CSV or in, in JSONs. Presence files. So the next idea is to uh, is to use Postman iteration as we request data. So uh, if I can use JSON files as iteration data, I can do a bit better than just change a couple of parameters. I can describe my request data in expected response data into the JSON files and exploit them in, in Postman. So at that point, uh, test scenario are defined in Postman. Uh, different items are for each request. Request data. Uh, is defined using JSON iteration data. And the response body is automatically compared to expected response uh, data. Uh, so this part of the code is factorized in, in Postman. Uh, tester can use the GUI to define new scenarios. It's still a bit technical. Um, but however, she can definitely write test data in, in, uh, in JSON configuration files to specify what she, she wants to say to have the query parents, body, and what she's expecting to be tested uh, automatically. Uh, globally, the complete process is a bit annoying, new endpoints to test, I mean, new scenario in Postman, you, you have to export the collection, use scripts to convert uh, OpenAPI to JSON schemes, to re-inject the schemes into the collection, re-import the collection to Postman, debug, fix, and, and so on. So it's not really sustainable. Uh, there's lots of copy-paste in Postman to different scenarios, Lots of interaction to inject the specifications into Postman collection. Uh, there's some limitation that prevents me from testing whatever I want. For example, you can specify file paths in a request bodies using iteration data, and that's a bummer for testing document management services. There's also some UX bummers like uh, using Postman collection with iteration data is not really handy because uh, you can't use Postman outside collection runner anymore when you're using iteration data. So it's, it's a bit annoying. Uh, request re replay just doesn't work properly. And uh, Postman is a bit resource greedy, so it gets slower and slower as you're working with bigger and bigger collections. So the third idea is to withdraw from Postman for the scenario definition. Uh, the documentation of the Postman collection SDK uh, is pretty good. Yes, it's uh, SDK to uh, generate Postman collection uh, from code instead of use, doing it from the GUI. 
Uh, so why not generate Postman collection entirely from JSON files? Uh, so we can see on the screen some, some example of how the, the scenario are, are defined. Uh, you, I can define Postman in terms of relationships with JSON convention, like uh, uh, I'm, I'm using Postman variables and uh, I am using uh, and saving response data into Postman variables. So I decided to formalize a, a scenario uh, as JSON files to and to generate the collection, the postman collection from them with a, a node uh, application. Uh, one benefit is that uh, I don't need iteration data anymore when running the tests on postman as all the items for each iteration are generated into the collection. The fourth idea is to uh, is to also withdraw from post, for, from Postman for the for running the tests and to use Newman, uh, which is command line tool, but can also be integrated as a node uh, library. So now I have a simple node application uh, generating the collections and running them. Uh, there's no repetitive process anymore to validate a modification of the test scenarios or the test data. Uh, there's nice existing dashboard to check the results, and that also can be used to uh, to analyze uh, why uh, there are, there are failures. And uh, if I need the Postman GUI to to dip into a debugging mode and change uh, value, uh, some change some minor terms to to see what why it doesn't work, I can import the the produce collections simply by um, importing into. Uh, importing from a link uh, in Postman. Uh, finally, we, uh, we have a, a, an API that is uh, uh, testing is that whether the testing automation is integrate, integrated with the CI uh, using Jenkins. And we, uh, we have uh, alerting in uh, Google Chat uh, from, uh, from Jenkins. Uh, so, and, and, and now uh, we're using it for, uh, for a few months now. Uh, the test project is adopted by the team uh, at different level. Uh, Open API is a good support for, for specifications, so it helps me to, to be accurate uh, for, for the development. Uh, tester can adapt uh, new test scenarios from existing one and can specify test data, which was a, a huge gap for, for, for her as uh, she didn't use uh, uh, IntelliJ or she didn't use uh, Git. Uh, it up before and, and now she can use it and she, she successfully do, does it. Uh, developers can run the test and, uh, and analyze the results, uh, either to correct uh, the test if uh, they are false positive or to, uh, to correct uh, the code if, uh, if they are fa real failures. Uh, the API endpoints are consistent uh, with uh, a consistent between uh, each other. And uh, there's a strong documentation that makes uh, integration by the other team easier. And we can also provide Postman collection as integration examples uh, from the Fonzie project, which also makes integration easier. Uh, now, with the uh, integration with Google Chat, uh, developers immediately know when non regression test fails, and testers can focus on designing new scenarios because uh, running a test campaign does not take time anymore. That's uh, the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. All right. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, let's see if there's any questions from the audience. All right. And we're on a little bit of a time delay, so we'll see if anything is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you based out of? Sorry? Uh, where are you based out of? Where are you located at? Uh, not. Ah, awesome. Yeah. Ah, so first question, is the Node app open sourced? Uh, no, no, it, it's not. Uh, I guess it could, it could be. I have to check with my, uh, with my company, but uh, um, yeah, I guess it could be. It's not very complicated. <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right. Well, kind of hang since any 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 more uh, any more questions coming in.
Right on. Cool. Well, I think uh, there's no more questions. So that's that's awesome. Well, thank you so much. That was a fantastic talk. And uh, oh, wait, uh, um, one talk to share the slides. But I I, I think that we'll we'll make sure that, that the slides are available to everybody uh, for sure. So we'll uh, we'll make sure to follow up there. But yeah, thanks for asking. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, well, thank you so much again. And um, look, looks like we have a uh, little short, short break until the next talk coming up uh, from Boris, uh, who's the chief data architect at ADP. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off just for a few minutes and let y'all take a bio break, refill the coffee or beer. You know, no one's judging. No one's judging here. You know, uh, also, no one knows what time it actually is where you're at. Right. I mean, you know, for all I know, you could be watching from Europe, and it's a very appropriate time to, uh, you know, to yeah. imbibe, imbibe a little bit. Right on, cool. Well, uh, well, again, I'm going to turn uh, turn camera off just for a few moments, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes, uh, hearing uh, about the uh, the pillars of successful API governance uh, from Boris. All right, so thank you so much, and and uh, stay tuned. We'll be back in about seven minutes or so.